welcome to your horoscope for January of 2021. Welcome to the new year, first month of the new year. And I'm going to say, I like it. I like it when I was looking at your astrology. If you look at the chart here, you can see that it is actually quite busy in the social zone, not to mention the seventh house is still very lit up for you this month, even though the eighth house is busy as well, especially as the month goes on. The sun and Jupiter travel together a little bit. Then the sun takes a, a trip with some Saturnian energy. This is also very good for social things or collaborative things. Jupiter is going to square Uranus, which tells me that in a social way there is again an ability to collaborate on something but we're going to make sure that the pieces are put in the right order mars is going forward mercury is coming retrograde but most of the energies are really moving forward this month and that is something to sink our teeth into as we're coming here into 2021 so i look forward to giving you a breakdown of the movements no matter how minute they may seem, I have picked out some things I think are very important for us this month. Now, as important as the planets are the people who are coming to the cyber house, including you. I am excited to bring you some beautiful guests in the Eat and Greets this month. We'll have Sharon Knight here, Zamboni Funk will be here, Druish will be here. We've got Barbara Yabara coming, Nathan Craddock will be here. And to start out the Eat and Greets this month, Mark Jones is coming. And not only are we going to bring you a topic, but we're also going to bring you a really delicious meditation so that we can all ground down into 2021 together right here and really get this thing kicked off in a way that we can evolve and be the most productive available to each of us here in 2021. So I look forward to bringing that to you. Remember, you can catch the Eat and Greets without ads, completely ad free over on Patreon. And that is in the description box down below to join me there. And soon my entire YouTube channel will be available ad free at Patreon as well. So keep your eyes posted for that. I will keep you posted. And I hope to see you in the winter solstice appointments. They are up, they are available. As long as there are appointments open, they are available. You can book your session, maybe just check in, see what 2021's got going for you in the description box down below, okay? All right, my beautiful Cancerian friends, let's jump in here, see what January's got for you and get you out ready to engage with it, okay? Right at the beginning of the month, on the second, we see Mars, who was retrograde for a very long time, came out of retrograde in November of 2020, but then he still needed to do the rest, the final portion of his retrograde path. So now on the second, Mars is out of the post-retrograde shadow phase. So what it means is that he is fully ready to engage in forward motion and energy. And this is beautiful. This is beautiful because it's our indicator that motivation and action is, in fact, moving forward. So just know that he has officially finished that retrograde path and Mars is ready to work. He's ready to move forward, okay? On the fourth, we've got Mercury, our planet of thinking, communications, decision-making, contracts, decisions, details, all of that coming back in bounds in the energy of Capricorn, so that seventh house. Now, when Mercury is out of bounds, it means he, he leaves the bounds of the sun. So he kind of is like, I do what I want, you know? <laughs> and when Mercury is out of retrograde, or excuse me, out of bounds, what happens is our, our conversation ideas, things around our identity, um, conversations that we're having, um, projects that we're working on, any kind of communications can really seem, it's like it's busy. It's like electricity is going on. There's so much it can create a fair amount of anxiety, just depending on the amount of mercury you're used to working with. But the other thing that happens when mercury goes out of bounds is we start to think, move, act, and connect outside of our normal circle. So in your relationships, you know, where have you been watching things? You're having conversations or meeting people that are out of your normal circle, or you're having to talk to people who are out of your normal circle, right? Where even in your conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships are you connecting with someone you have a relationship with and they are really far away they are out of your normal bounds for the two of you or something like that either way as mercury drops back in here on the fourth inbounds we're going to take all those things we saw out of bounds and we bring them back inbounds and start to make decisions and have conversations in that way in our relationships because it's the seventh house for you so conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships open enemies live here as well. So you know if somebody does not care for an interaction with you, but whatever it is, 
Mercury inbounds brings it back to our normal kind of table. Now on the 6th, Mars is going to move that energy forward into the energy of Taurus, okay? Mars in Taurus, not the most comfortable placement for him because Mars is ready to rock and roll and go and he wants to do things and he's like, let's move. And Taurus is like, we are going to move, but we're going to move at my pace, right? Which is typically a bit slower. Now this is going to light up your 11th house space. Friends, social groupings, causes that you are about, especially anything humanitarian or you feel like you get to fight for other people or fight to have a voice, your voice added to a group in some way, shape, or form. The 11th house is also long-range plans, goals, designs, what you aspire for yourself. And the 11th house is a house of accolades. You want some accolades. You want a little recognition here. Mars in the house, if I want some recognition, yes, please. So maybe even in your friend zone here, you are you are ahead of the class a little bit in some way, shape, or form, or you are showing up in a way that is really practical, very dependable, very stable, and you're getting some recognition for that. Now, where I also like this energy, coming off of Mars having been in your work zone for a very long time, is that this could also be an energy where you are seen within your group of work peers or social peers as being very dependable as well. And that would be very good for you as we travel the rest of the month. But Mars is Mars, my friends, and Mars may bring some conflict if needed to your 11th house zone to get things going for sure. On the 8th, we're going to see Mercury move into the energy of Aquarius, joining Jupiter and Saturn over there. And we're going to see Venus move into the energy of Capricorn, so your 7th house, which the 7th house, this is nothing new for you. You've been working on this for the last couple years. Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, they've all been in Capricorn crystallizing you, bringing relationships to an end if they couldn't stay with you, bringing relationships that could stay to a more serious level, making you question yourself and your understanding and your interaction in in relationships, right? This has been a very big thing, whether it's been personal or business. These energies have been at play. So now as Venus comes here, she's almost coming to put some salve on all the good work you did. You know, she's like coming to bring you the good job you did, good work, harmony cocktail over to your seventh house. She's like, good job for you. But also Venus is a magnetizer, right? So she's bringing benefit to this area for you in some way, shape, or form. Venus in the seventh house, could you take it and go get married or make a commitment that ends up being very valuable to you and this other party? Yes, absolutely. Do you sign a business contract? Mercury is back in bounds at this time and it is really beneficial for you. Does it bring harmony between you and someone who's an open enemy? Whatever it is, Venus is trying to magnetize a benefit to this particular area for you. If you are single, it could bring someone into your life. If you are coupled up, it could bring something nice and needed to the table for sure. Lots of pleasure available with that placement. Now, Mercury in Aquarius in the eighth house is ready to be social. Ready to be social, ready to do these collaborations, ready to... Um, ready to have conversations in a very social way about practical things maybe even. You know, it could be the finances, it could be the taxes, it could be insurance going forward. This could be long range communication that's happening between you and a friend or you and your spouse or your partner in some way, shape or form. But either way, this eighth house space is a space of resources. It's our most vulnerable resources. It's our intimacy to the people, places and things connected around us. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if you don't find yourself having some pretty deep and beautiful conversations here. But the conversations could also be, um, oh, for somebody, okay, okay, so for somebody it looks like a friend is getting ready to stop being a friend and maybe become something else or there's an interaction that that blurs that line from friendship to romance maybe a little bit oh that's interesting please keep me posted if that is you okay on the 13th we're going to have a new moon happening at 23 degrees of capricorn so again lighting up the seventh house space we're going to plant our seeds of intention at this new moon plant the seeds of intention to not have to begin something brand new but to begin something fresh. Give it fresh eyes, fresh perspective. Trust your instincts, trust your intuition. At the new moon, there is no 
light, it's dark. So around your relationships, what do you want to manifest into your life? What do you want to bring into your life? What do you want to see differently around your relationships? And this could be if you're in a legal battle, do you need to see information differently? Do you need to regard something in that battle differently? Look at it in that way. You've been crystallized around relationships over this last two years. So use this moon to help you achieve Capricorn, the next level that you would like in this relationship. And yes, I do think that for somebody, this could be an impromptu wedding or an impromptu let's move in together. Something like that could definitely be happening. On the 14th, we see Uranus coming out of retrograde, coming direct in the energy of Taurus. So again, this is in your 11th house space. So Uranus, natural ruler of the 11th house, right? So it's been bringing some surprising things though to your 11th house space, maybe alignments with groupings, things with friends. Maybe it even brought a little innovation to your friendship zone. But I'm really getting this buzz for you too, Cancer, that Uranus and Taurus maybe really got you very ship shape and getting very tech savvy. Like you became really familiar with how to connect with people online, which nothing like a pandemic to help you learn to do that. But also this is like you get it now, right? There's something very tech savvy or it's bringing that tech savviness, maybe even a solid steady Taurus into your life to show you how to do technology or groupings or friendship in a very practical, delicious kind of way. So I love that Uranus would have shaken you up in this area, would have been like, there's more. There's more to see here. There's more to experience. Now, as we get to the 15th, Mercury is going to enter the pre-retrograde shadow time. So the first part of its retrograde path, okay? It's going to retrograde in that energy of Aquarius. So in the eighth house. So as of the 15th, Cancer, Start to pay attention in your eighth house, in your joint resources, your taxes, your insurance, your money, your fear, your vulnerabilities, your sex, your reproductive organs. What is starting to come into your attention that maybe will need a revision or a rethought or a reconnection? You, this is Aquarian energy. Are you calling back a friend or a connection from the past? Or is it just coming to you and you're feeling like you're engaging that for some reason? Whatever that is, start to pay attention as of the 15th because going forward from the 30th on during the retrograde, that's what you're going to work on, okay? On the 17th, we have got Jupiter in Aquarius, so of course the 8th house, squaring Uranus, who's just come out of retrograde, at 6 degrees of Taurus in the 11th house. So now this square, the square stimulates action based on too much tension, okay? So this square is telling me you have something you're ready to launch out. You have something you're ready to commit to, whether it's a marriage or it's a project or it is a collaboration. You're ready to go. And I support this fully moving forward. I just also want you from the 17th to about the 19th, make sure all the pieces are in working order. Make sure you have all of the information. Make sure you're not going to... Um, what you're doing, make sure it sits right with your insights. Make sure it honestly sits right with your insights so this doesn't have to be a mistake, especially if it is something in the realm that you've done this a lot or many times. Pause. Make sure that that's not what it is. Now, if you have something that is already out there, including that relationship, the project, something you're working on, watch it work for this couple days. Watch and see what it's doing. Is it doing what you need it to do? Are there mistakes? Are there cracks in the foundation? Watch it do what you're asking it to do or to bring into your life so that you can adjust it as need be, okay? On the 19th, we see the sun come into the energy of Aquarius, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. So now we're also motivated in the 8th house area. Maybe even your partner is motivated, right? Or, you know, if it's a collaboration, that person is motivated to connect with you. This is an intimate connection. And intimacy doesn't always have to mean sex. It just means at the level of we are connected in a joint way. And this is our fears. These are our traumas, right? There was something on the other side of it that made a connection with you. So as the sun is here, if you need a healing, if you need to detox, if you need um, rejuvenation, I'm thinking here too, Aquarius is quite social. So if you have a friend or yeah, for some of you, it may be a parent or a family member, maybe let me say family member, um, and they are addressing issues of detox, death, psychological transformation, rebirth, something like that. That could be something that also calls your attention to the table as the sun comes into there, okay? 
On the 28th, we've got a full moon happening in the energy of Leo. This is the second house. This is a change, a swap, or an adjustment to your finances or to your things of value, your possessions maybe even, right? The full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to make an adjustment here. There's a lot of light shed over your money, over how you make money, how you regard your self-worth and your value on this planet, and just the physical things that you value. So in the energy of Leo, you're going to be like, mine is mine, yours is yours. So what is yours? What expresses you? Does that budget express who you are and who you want to be? Cancer, um, do your possessions, does your house, does your space express you? Is it the bold statement of your uniqueness? And if not, you're going to adjust for sure. On the 30th, as we close out this month, Cancer, we're going to see Mercury ready to take that retrograde. It's going to retrograde at 26 degrees of Aquarius, back all the way up to 11 degrees of Aquarius and come direct February 20th. Now we will see Mercury leave its full four-part retrograde path, the pre, the retrograde, the direct, and the post shadow, March 13th, where he'll come back to 26 degrees of Aquarius. That's how we know it's left the shadow, okay? So this eighth house is going to be lit up. You started keeping a little eye on it on the 15th to say, okay, universe, what are you showing me about this particular area of my life? What do I need to see? What do I need to um, accept the invitation to reconsider, re-edit, retro, revise this area of my life? And now, over this next three and a half weeks, you'll do that under this Mercury retrograde. You'll bring it to culmination when we get to March and move that energy forward. It's going to be a beautiful month. If you look at these planets, they are up, they are lit, they are ready to work in a cosmic conspiracy to help you evolve this month. So I hope you take full advantage of it. Please keep me posted on what's happening for you in the comment section down below. As things advance and change and move forward or switch direction on this channel, I'll keep you posted about those things as well. All right, my beautiful Cancers, I love you a lot and I'll see you in February. Bye, my friends.